What's going on, my movie friends? This is Tommy Knocker, the movie guy, coming at you. And I'm continuing the 10 Things I've Always Wondered series. I thought I would stop picking on Jason and Michael for a little bit. You know, I kind of tore apart their movies for the past couple of weeks. Doing 10 Things I've Wondered about the Friday the 13th and the Halloween movies. Today I'm going to pick on Fred. I'm going to pick on Fred Krueger. Today's movie, guys, 10 Things I've Always Wondered about A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Freddy's Revenge. Yeah, the weird one. This is the weird one. I just rewatched this again yesterday. Please comment, guys. How do you feel about Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 Freddy's Revenge? If you know the Fred, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, you know this one kind of sticks out for particular reasons. And we're going to get to that. We'll get to it. The thing I didn't really like about this one is the formula. I don't care about the other stuff. And uh, right away, I don't like revenge in the title. I know I'm being a... I'm, it's not that big of a deal, and it's not on there. Not a fan of revenge in these titles, like Halloween 5 too. Isn't every Nightmare on Elm Street movie Freddy's Revenge? Isn't that the whole point of Freddy is revenge? So why do you need part two being called Freddy's Revenge? You know what I mean? But I guess it's the second one. Whatever. But here are ten things I've always wondered about Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Uh, I watched this young. I was really young when this came out eight or nine years old and i didn't pick up on any of the stuff that we're going to be talking about not until later years not until my later years so here we go first thing i've always wondered about nightmare on elm street 2 freddy's revenge here we go is this the most confusing elm street movie and what i mean by that is the formula the plot freddy krueger he's using jesse he's using his body jesse's family has moved into the house now that nancy lived in He's using Jesse. Guys, this really feels a lot like Amityville Horror 2. I never really picked up on that before, but when I watched this yesterday, I got Amityville Horror 2 vibes. And um, I even got some... Do you think this belongs in the same... Elm Street 2 is known as the Black Sheep. No matter how you feel about it, it's different. It's the Black Sheep of the family. Do you think this kind of belongs in the same category... As say like uh, a Friday Night Part Five, a New Beginning, or Halloween Three, Season of the Witch. You know those ones kind of stick out for weird reasons. F yeah, Freddy Krueger's in this one, but the the whole formula of Freddy's different. I mean, the, the pool party alone. You know him coming out and killing those kids at the pool party, and in this inside a dream. Nobody's dreaming in this. At the end of the movie, at the end of the movie in the boiler room, nobody's dreaming there. Nobody's dreaming when Snyder got killed. The coach Snyder in the school. Jesse was not dreaming, Snyder was not dreaming, but Freddy was out. I don't understand. I like this movie. It's enjoyable. I really do think it's a good entry. I enjoy part two more than like, see, the dream child, Freddy's dead, all that shit. I enjoy a lot more. I like part two. But is this the most confusing Elm Street movie? It's, it's a legit question. Number two. Elephant in the room, we'll talk about it. The homoerotic stuff. I was eight or nine years old. I didn't pick up any of this shit, and I didn't care. I just wanted Freddy to kill people. Don't care. And I still don't. It doesn't bother me. But man, it was pretty blatantly obvious. Now that was <laughs> I mean, Jesse, dude. You're 17, 18, I'm guessing. You're a senior. And you got a no chicks allowed sign in your room. Come on, man. That's that the shit fly if you get a tree fort. When you're like eight or nine, cool. And he's got a board game named Probe they threw in there. <laughs> little, little hints. Oh, uh, and the, the dancing scene, you know, with him cleaning his room. Have you guys ever cleaned your room dancing like that? Uh, his relationship, his friendship with Grady. I didn't pick up on that either, you know. But, you know, and the pool party scene, you know, he's, he's getting it on with Lisa. And then Jesse says, I can't do this. I got to leave. And he leaves and he runs to Grady in his bed. Little subtle hints here and there. I, I, I see it now. I do. But I, back then when I was a kid, I could care less. Still don't, really. Number three. How did Jesse live? How did he live? Like, okay, so the scene where Freddy comes out of him in Grady's bedroom. Jesse's basically just skin. He's basically just skin, guys. I just came out. This movie's got me well worked up. My earplug just came out. How did Jesse live? For real, it's a legit question. Even at the end, when Freddy is defeated and he comes out of him. Wow. This, the, the formula of this movie is all over the place. It's all over the place. I don't know how he lived. 
So if you guys, you Elm Street fans, so I gotta admit, like when it comes to the Elm Street movies and the Halloween movies, I don't, I don't like Nightmare on Elm Street as much. I don't have as much affection. More than when I was a kid. Please explain this logic to me. How did Jesse live through that? Does Freddy keep on wanting to use him, his skin, his body? Like, I can get one time you're going to use it, and that's good. But, like, even when Jesse, after Grady died, he went to Lisa's party. He went to Lisa's pool party, again, covered in blood, and then he, he's, he comes out from the desk, and once again, he's turned into Freddy Krueger. Is this like an Incredible Hulk Bruce Banner thing? Every time he gets upset, he turns into Freddy Krueger? Number four. Number four. The end of the movie, Freddy's boiler room. He's got a couple pets. Again, this is not a dream. Nobody's dreaming here. Freddy's in the world now. This is the real world. Freddy's in the boiler room that, or the whatever the boiler that he used to work at. He's there waiting for Lisa to try to save Jesse, and he's got some pets. He's got this thing. He's got this dog with a human face. So my question is, guys, what if this was your pet? What should what would you name him? What should Freddy name this pet? Or what would you name this pet? And also, that's not the only pet he has. There's apparently a giant cat rat monster that ate another little mouse in the boiler room with Freddy. What? This is happening. This is, again, I, I can't stress this enough, guys. This is not a dream. This is not a nightmare. This is the real world. So the, did Freddy have this when he worked at the boiler room when he, when he was human? When he was alive? Did, were they his pets? So what would you name that dog, guys? What would you name that dog with a human face? Look at that. Oh, God. I have no idea what I would name that. Butterball? Boozer? I, I, I really don't know. Let me know, guys. What would you name that dream demon dog? What do you even call this? A demon dog? A dream dog? Nightmare? A, Number five. What was Snyder's intentions for Jesse that night? Really, though, that was creepy. He's a teacher. He obviously doesn't like Jesse. doesn't like him. He makes him run laps in gym class. Him and Grady. Nobody really likes Snyder. He's one of those teachers. He's a hard ass. No personality. Doesn't joke with the kids. Apparently, he's gay. Fine. And Jesse ends up in this gay club at night and there's Snyder and Snyder makes him so they apparently go back to the school and he makes him run laps why because he's in a gay bar is he afraid that he's gonna tell people so if you're afraid you're gonna tell people you think you would not make him run laps because he's gonna be like fuck you confuse again man the most confusing Elm Street movie in existence what was Snyder's intentions what was his real intentions? And then he made him hit the showers. What was going to happen afterwards, man? I, hate, ugh, I don't know. I don't know. But Snyder got his. He got his ass slapped by towels. That showed him, Freddy. Number six. The bus. The school bus opener. Is that the coolest opener for Elm Street? I mean, I think it is. I thought it was better than the first opener. We get a while. Then Tina dies. Part three. Dream Warriors, probably, it, without a doubt, the best Nightmare on Elm Street movie. But was it the best opener? I'm giving this the best opener, guys. Part two, the school bus scene. This terrified kids probably for a while, getting on that school bus. You know, this, you know the scene where they drift off and then start going into, like, hell or a dream or their nightmare. Kids would probably be like, good. You're not going to go to school. You're going to go to this place instead. I'm cool with that. Freddy, take me away. But is this, is this seriously the coolest opener? And if you guys ever watch License to Drive with Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, that opener in the beginning, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 vibes. I wonder if they got it from them. If you know what I'm talking about, comment. The License to Drive opener in the beginning, very reminiscent of Elm Street 2 opener. So is this the coolest opener in Elm Street? Number seven. So there's a couple there's a couple comments in this movie, guys, about the first movie, you know, about Nancy's family in the house. And this one had me a little bit confused. 
Nancy's mom's death in the first one's confusing anyway. First of all, Elm Street is classic. The first movie is, I love it. But her death scene, both of them, whatever one you believe happened for real, are both fucking stupid. The skeleton in the bed thing, and she's got her hand waving, I, I, I think, right? She was like waving her, her skeleton hand at them, saying goodbye, sinking into the bed. Uh, okay. And then in the dream sequence, or was it a dream sequence, her mom, the mannequin doll gets thrown through the window, but they make a comment, guys. So I'm going to say it right now. How did the mom die in part one or not? Because they make a comment that she died in the living room. Did you know she died right here in her living room? So did she die up in the bedroom that they that we thought she did? Or did she really die in the living room when she was sucked through that fucking door? Like a mannequin? Where did she die? Number eight. Is this the scariest Freddy? Is this the scariest Freddy? And I hear this a lot, guys. Is this the scariest, most intimidating, the most ruthless Freddy Krueger? It's a low kill count. That's not what it's about. Freddy's not about the kill count. It's about his intentions. It's about his true intentions. And he is the scariest looking Freddy, I think. Makeup wise, his demeanor, the voice. I do. I, I agree. Do you guys agree with me? Do you think Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge Freddy, is the scariest Freddy? Let me know. Number nine. What's up with that cereal? What? Fool me and choose cereal, guys. It looks like the Grinch on meth. Fool me and choose. Apparently, I think you can really buy this. I think you can buy this cereal. Probably, I don't know if it's a prop or something. Uh, yeah, that was a weird choice. Any, any, is there any reasoning behind this one, guys? Fool me and choose. First of all, I mean, now it probably wouldn't fly. You would definitely, definitely need to see this cereal on the shelves today. Fool, fool me and choose cereal comes with a comes with a toy. You know, the sister had the nails. Did you guys do that as a kid? Back in the 80s and 90s, I don't think they have it so much now. You had to dump the cereal. You had to dump all the cereal into a bowl to get the prize. You had to dump all that Rice Krispies just to get to the little whistle. You know what I mean? Did you do it? Because I did. It didn't matter what it was. It wasn't even a, like a prize I wanted. Just spite. Just spite the cereal. Like, dump it. Get my 3D glasses. Get my plastic ring. Get my plastic spider ring. Whatever it was. But uh, Fu Man Chew Cereal, what do you think the flavor is of that cereal, guys? Do you think it's like a, I don't know, do you think it's like a, is it Lucky Charms consistent? Probably just a Lucky Charms. That looks, what is that character? It does, it looks like the Grinch on meth to me. And the last, number 10 thing I've always wondered about Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, is, so the police bring Jesse home, okay, the night that Snyder was murdered in the gym they didn't find him yet until the next morning but they found jesse walking that night naked in the rain and what my question is is after you find a teacher brutally murdered on display in the school the same night you find this kid and you brought him home nobody once questioned jesse after they found snyder i mean a little bit I mean, he thinks he killed Snyder. Nobody else. I mean, he's been seen in the school. When did surveillance cameras... I don't think surveillance cameras came out in the 80s, right? In schools? Not in schools. I don't think until the 90s, if I'm correct. Surveillance cameras were around, but I just don't think schools maybe had surveillance cameras in the 80s. Because he was there. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was at the school. Snyder's constantly making him and Grady run laps. There's your motive. I'm just saying... In the pool party, too, guys, they, the parents, Lisa's parents threw a pool party, what was it, a day or two after a teacher was brutally murdered at their school? Let's have a party! Listen, I know Snyder wasn't liked, but isn't that in bad taste a little bit, to throw a pool party after a teacher was murdered? And the murder wasn't found. That's the bitch of it all, this small town. The murderer was not found. So everybody's out and about having a pool party. I love this town. I love this town. So there you have it, guys. Those are some of the things I've always wondered about the wacky and wonderful Nightmare on Elm Street 2 of Betty's Revenge. Guys, please like and comment. Stab that notification bell. 
drop some comments. Uh, let me know what you think about Elm Street 2. Some things that you've wondered. You got any answers for me? Hit me up. Thanks for all the support too, by the way. I'm getting closer and closer and closer to a thousand subscribers. I never thought I would see it so quick because it's it just kind of came on really quick all of a sudden, guys. So, all right, guys, I gotta get going because you know it's starting to kick in now. Yep, all that's right, that's that's right, gonna be my hint. Right. That right there. I gotta go. It's time to go. All right, guys. Next time. See you soon.